Brace yourself, because China is about to embark on a mission that will take us to a place no country has ever been before. The far side of the moon. That's right, the Chang'e 6 mission is not your average lunar adventure. It's a groundbreaking expedition that will attempt the first ever sample return for the mysterious lunar far side. But here's the catch. They need to launch this mission soon, or they might miss their window. The clock is ticking, and the stakes are high. What's up, spacers? This is your specialist, the space technician. Now, I know what you're thinking, but space technician, hasn't China already landed on the far side with the Chang'e 4 mission? You're absolutely right, but Chang'e 6 is taking things to a whole new level. They're not just landing there, they're bringing back pieces of the moon that could unlock secrets about our celestial neighbor's history and evolution. And trust me, you're going to want to see what they discover. So join me on this epic adventure to the far side of the moon with China's Chang'e 6 mission. Remember, strapping in is optional, but recommended. China is pulling out all the stops for the Chang'e 6 mission. They're sending a spacecraft weighing a whopping 8,200 kilograms into space using their trusty Long March 5 rocket. That's like launching a fully grown African elephant into lunar orbit. The mission is set to launch this year, 2024, possibly as early as May, from the Wenchang Satellite Launch Center. So, mark your calendar, folks. But what makes Chang'e 6 so unique? Well, it's all about the moon's far side. You see, the far side is always facing away from Earth, making communication a real challenge. But China has a plan. To overcome this challenge, China has deployed a relay satellite called Chiqiao 2 to act as a communication link between Earth and the Chang'e 6 lander. Chiqiao 2 orbits around the Earth-Moon Lagrange Point 2, L2, a gravitationally stable point located approximately 65,000 kilometers beyond the Moon. At this unique location, the satellite can maintain a constant line of sight with both the Earth and the far side of the Moon, making it an incredible sweet spot. The satellite is equipped with a large high-gain antenna that enables it to send and receive signals over the vast distances involved. The Chang'e 6 lander will communicate with Chechiao 2 using a specialized S-band radio system. The lander will transmit data to the satellite, which will then relay the signal to Earth using a larger X-band antenna. This relay system allows mission controllers to send commands to the lander and receive scientific data and images in real time, despite the lander being on the far side of the moon. So, where is the lander going? The Apollo Crater Named after the Apollo missions that first explored the moon, it's a large impact crater located within the South Pole Aitken Basin. The South Pole Aitken Basin is the largest and oldest impact crater on the moon, spanning over 2,500 kilometers in diameter and up to 13 kilometers deep. The basin is thought to have formed over 4 billion years ago, and its formation likely exposed materials from the moon's lower crust and upper mantle. The crater measures approximately 540 kilometers in diameter and is up to 4 kilometers deep. The southern region of the crater, where Chang'e 6 will land, is of particular interest due to its unique geological features and potential to contain material from the moon's interior. The rocks and soil collected by Chang'e 6 from this region could provide invaluable insights into the composition and evolution of the moon's interior. By studying the mineralogy, geochemistry, and age of these samples, scientists hope to better understand the processes that shaped the moon's early history, including its formation, differentiation, and subsequent evolution. In addition, the samples could shed light on the nature and origin of the lunar mantle, which remains poorly understood. The moon's mantle is thought to be compositionally distinct from the Earth's, and studying mantle-derived rocks could provide clues about the conditions and processes that led to the formation of the Earth-Moon system over 4.5 billion years ago. The Chang'e 6 spacecraft is a marvel of engineering. It consists of four modules, a service module, a lander, an ascent vehicle, 
and a re-entry capsule. The Chang'e 6 lander is equipped with a sophisticated propulsion system, including a central engine and 28 small thrusters, which allows for precise maneuvers during the landing sequence. The lander uses a 3D laser scanning system and a microwave ranging sensor to create a topographic map of the landing site, enabling it to autonomously select the safest landing spot. For sample collection, the lander features a robotic arm with a scoop for collecting loose regolith and small rocks from the surface, and a drill capable of penetrating up to 2 meters into the subsurface. The drill uses a rotary percussive mechanism and a tungsten carbide drill bit to collect pristine samples while maintaining their integrity. The collected samples, up to 500 grams, are stored in a sealed container inside the lander under strict temperature, negative 20 degrees Celsius, and pressure, less than 10 to the negative 6 pascal, conditions, to prevent contamination and degradation. The container is then transferred to the ascent vehicle a small rocket designed to launch the samples into lunar orbit for rendezvous with the service module. The ascent vehicle, powered by a solid-fuel rocket engine, features a guidance, navigation, and control system for precise maneuvers and a docking mechanism to securely attach to the service module. Once docked, the sample container is transferred to the re-entry capsule. After a 53-day mission, the re-entry capsule will separate from the service module and make a fiery descent through Earth's atmosphere. The re-entry capsule, equipped with a heat shield made of phenolic impregnated carbon ablator, PICA, protects the samples during the intense heat of re-entry. A parachute system, consisting of two main parachutes and a drogue parachute, ensures a soft landing. After landing, the samples are recovered and transported to a secure facility for analysis. Focusing on determining the composition, age, origin, and potential for supporting future lunar exploration and resource utilization. But Chang'e 6 isn't just about collecting rocks. It's also carrying some fascinating scientific instruments from around the world. There's the detection of outgassing radon, DORN, instrument from France, which will measure the amount of radon gas being released from the lunar surface. This could provide insights into the Moon's interior and geologic activity. Then there's the negative ions at the lunar surface, NILS instrument, contributed by Sweden and ESA. This instrument will study the negative ions in the lunar exosphere, which are created when solar UV radiation interacts with the lunar surface. Understanding these ions could shed light on the Moon's tenuous atmosphere and its interaction with the solar wind. Italy is contributing a laser retroreflector called INRI, which will help measure the distance between Earth and the Moon with incredible precision. And last but not least, Pakistan is sending a small satellite called IceCube Q along for the ride. This CubeSat will be deployed in lunar orbit and conduct its own scientific investigations. So there you have it, folks. The Chang'e 6 mission is a testament to China's growing space capabilities and its commitment to lunar exploration. It's a mission packed with scientific potential, international collaboration, and engineering marvels. As we count down to the launch in May, remember to keep an eye on our channel for updates. Until then, keep looking up at the stars and dreaming of the incredible adventures that await us in space. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell. This is the Space Technician, signing off for now, and I'll see you Space Cowboys in the next one.